Hey, good day. Good day. How you doing, dude? Ah, uh, yeah. It's working. Yeah, I'm fine. A bit uh, late for me, so. What time is it for you right now? Yeah, uh, it's uh, 11 in the evening. Okay. Usually okay. I'm in bed because the kids will wake me up uh, okay. very early. You know, you should do. You but should start. Then, you should start staying up until like five in the morning. Yeah, that should be better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's like my lifestyle, dude. Uh, no, that's cool though. Uh, yeah, like. Uh, but dude. Yeah, how how you uh, you ready for this? You ready for some coaching? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so uh, I guess just as I do with everybody, let me know uh, what league you uh, you're in, what race you play, and uh, just kind of like what, how you like to play StarCraft in general, like a general idea of your builds. Uh, yeah, well, I've been playing uh, StarCraft for quite some while. That's um, um, just casual, and okay. uh, some time ago I discovered your Bronze to uh, Grandmaster series, and I thought, well, let's try the last race I've never played, so I started Terran. And I'm actually really liking it. So I, I did the mech build. And I did it all to platinum and diamond at the moment. Nice. And then I noticed that, well, the, the builds from you, they're getting a bit um, more difficult, more diverse. Then I started uh, falling off. Yeah. So I did some 2 one one builds for a while. Uh, but I felt really weak against uh, quick air openings and some other uh, rushes. And at the moment, I'm settling at the one 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 build order that's from... Um, uh, Terrancraft, and I like it a lot. It's very versatile, and I feel at last game I could have played a little bit different, and maybe had a better chance. So I really like that one. Okay. Um. So I'm. I yeah. I am diamond, but after every game I get like the the red exclamation mark that I'm about to fall off to platinum three, <laughs> okay. platinum one again. Yeah, yeah. And I really want to get rid of that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, what uh what matchup would you say you wanna you think you wanna work on the most? Um, I think I would like to have more like a, uh, a diversification of my build for each matchup. So in, instead okay. of just doing the same thing every time, so maybe having a little bit of tweaks so uh, I could play against oh, uh, different things a little yeah. bit better. Um, and I've got a I've got a replay if you, if you're okay with that. Yeah, let's let's um, simply uh, we can jump into it. Uh, uh, cool, and it's it's against the it's against Pro. Does it does a a zealot rush while still expanding? I'm just. I have no idea how I, I can hold that kind of stuff. And okay. I get a lot of like early rushes or a quick few links, and they delay me a lot. So yeah. I think that that uh, so that's a big one for me. One thing for you as well that's going to be pretty huge. That'll make your I feel like it'll like make your put your mind at ease to a degree, and it'll make your life feel a little bit easier. Is when you say you want some more diversity to your playstyles, that's totally valid to you know feel that way. That's fine, but in in doing that, it doesn't have to mean that you have to just have different openers for a different match like oh you gotta be like oh i gotta have four openers or three openers for each matchup doesn't have to quite be as yeah. extreme as that but instead it's just understanding how to react to your opponent with a build that is standard yeah. and then yeah. just being able to branch to like how do i defend whatever the fuck is going on or how can i best to use yeah, this situation? Absolutely. but it still could be your yeah, base because, opener yeah and the build i'm using now i'm like with um um uh, with, with, I'm making a cyclone and a Viking, yeah. But I'm making that every time. Yeah. yeah so yeah. sometimes they absolutely work, and, but sometimes they're just doing nothing, and I probably could have made something else. Makes sense. Uh, depending on what I've scouted, for example. So. Okay. Uh, I feel that's like like kind of a place where I can diverse a bit. Yeah. Hey, yeah. What's, uh, should we should we play in Europe or on America? Yeah. Are you, you're Europe normally, so I I can jump over to EU. So you have your replays. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I've got them on Americas as well. Oh, do, okay. Well, which would you prefer? Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll come to your side. It's easier to find you, I guess. Okay. Oh, I just came to Europe. I'll go back to it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Either way works. Okay, so we're not... Yes, uh, let's see. Uh, where, where is... I would say this. For, for you, where is your best replays? Or do you have the same ones on both servers? No, I've got the same ones. I copied them. Okay, well, we just do America then. It's fine. Uh, I just, want, Grand Master Shonda, right? I just want to make sure you're getting your actual replays in and you're not just like, ah, whatever, we'll use a replay that's outdated or, or something like that. <laughs> no, I, I did one game in America and it's 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 a placement match and it was um, totally different than in Europe. Uh, so that's it. Your rank at the moment? Okay, so uh, right now I am like rank 140 something. I'll be able to tell you in just a second, but I... Uh... Yeah. Oh, nice, I got you. Sorry for being late on the donos. Been going through some pretty bad sleep time, schedules, but two guys are covered. Yeah, thank you very much, Wally. I'm doing one right now. Appreciate you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Much appreciated. 
All right, oh, so okay. I am right now. I am rank 141. Yeah. Looks like you're offline at the moment. Much love, Wally. It's a huge dono. Thank you. Uh, I sh should be on. I'm uh, I'm in right now. Oh, there you go. Uh, are, yeah. are you uh, Hurricane? Yeah, that's me. Okay. Uh, At least you can I, pronounce that thing. <laughs> I, I pronounce it right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. <laughs> You're like, no, it's Hurricane? <laughs> 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 oh, shit. All right, I can't actually invite you because you have a privacy setting on, so you can just invite me and that works just fine. Yeah, let's see. Invite the party. Yeah. Okay, so... And then just to do the uh, the whole watch with others, and then before you start the game, make me lobby host, and we'll that way I can yep. have control. And we'll jump into it. Okay, cool. All right. Like this? What's up? Yeah, but I'm say that once you get to diamond, the game gets so much more fun. No, it does. That's I. I feel like once you get to diamond, that's when you can actually start controlling your units and having like yeah, you're, yeah. You, you play the game. Yeah, what playing it's the game. Like. I mean, exactly. I mean, I watch it a lot. <laughs> yeah. I watch so much StarCraft, and yeah. now finally, you're like, if your macro has a certain level, you can oh, well, you can do like like the, the placement and the tanks and everything. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really fun. You actually get to play the fun part of StarCraft. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's not just SimCity anymore. All right. All right. So. In general, uh, we'll we'll break down your build and see what you see. But scouting and mm -hmm. reaction, scouting and reaction to what you see is gonna definitely be a, a big deal for like advancing you. You know, in terms of like how does it make sense and what do you want to think about when you see a person's build? Uh, yeah. Your build so far looks super standard Reaper. This looks like a Reaper expand opener, which is yeah. if, that, if that is what it is, it's very normal, very good. It's fine. I'll speed it forward yeah. a little bit. Du, du. Okay, yeah, that's exactly what you're doing. So so far, it builds great. I love that you're scouting yep. with the barrack scout. That's uh, you know. Yeah, I recently delayed it because I had a lot of early scouts, and then you just see nothing. Yeah. So and here's then, yeah, well. here's the tip. Okay. Already, mm -hmm. you you can already tell what this guy's doing, and it, like like automatically, and there's multiple things that you should be afraid of or worried about, based on what you see. Okay. So right now, yeah. what you can tell from this guy's build, and you always compare it to your build, all right? So if you compare to your mm -hmm. build and you go, okay, well, because everything costs the same. Build time is the same of like Command Center Nexus, build time same, resource cost is the same. Depot, build time same yeah. to a pylon, all, all of it. Barracks, gateway, SCV probe, it's all the same. Uh, the only difference is probes yeah. can be chrono boosted a little bit, and that, that's fine. But and now if you look at this, and your build, your build was depot, racks, and then uh, gas with the racks, and then an immediate command center right after, and then finally a second depot. And your command center is yeah. only like one third of the way done, right? If you look at the Protoss, yeah. his Nexus is already like three fourths of the way done. So you're like yeah, around like faster. exactly you're you're around like thirty percent. He's around like seventy five percent. Why is there a discrepancy there? And you could think, okay, well, what if he actually spent his hundred and fifty minerals that went into the gateway was actually instead not. And that was sped up on the Nexus, which made the difference of his yeah. Nexus being ahead by like, you know, 40%. So automatically, in this game, yeah, this look, or, yeah. what's up? This looked like a macro build to me, like it's econo economic opening. So yeah. I was thinking, oh, this isn't a rush. Yeah, it's, for a rush, it's definitely not a rush yet. It's definitely a Nexus first. Yeah. So looking at this right now, you should definitely not do things like rush a bunker or get really, really defensive and like, you know, do things that go in line with that where like you prioritize defense over greed so this is for now yeah. for the next like two minutes of this game or like three minutes of this game you are not going to get attacked yeah so we scouted to his base and now you see da, 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 as you go deeper yeah okay. so i see the twilight council going down yep and then i'm expecting like a, a quick something like either blink or a charge yeah so he's already got now here's the crazy thing, okay? Here's here's the part where it kind of blew my mind about what he did. He already has a core that's done. So this is where I would say weird players get fucking weird, essentially to a degree. And this build now 
it if we went back and broke down his build, okay, so there is a discrepancy of super fast co uh, command or super fast nexus to a, a later command center, and again things cost the same. Uh, mm -hmm. And now, he, like, I guess you also I, uh, okay, so not entirely. You have you have the cost of the the orbital command, and Protoss doesn't have that, and that's kind of like the core. So yeah, the fact that the core is done actually makes it to where I still actually feel like that this is. Uh, gateway first into Nexus. I think he just didn't build his gas until after he built the Nexus. So, yeah, like it's he just yeah, yeah okay. it, it, it's fine. It's it's not a big deal. It's I'm glad you're scouting deeper into his base. It's just the the big the big deal of all of it is seeing the the Nexus that's super thrown down super early. Just a Nexus at all is definitely a, a advantage for you because you go again the early game of terms mm -hmm. in terms of like how you feel because you know you feel yeah you can, you can feel safe for your macro play. So your scout going deeper in is super important. I love that you check the gas. I love that you check the second gas. And even furthermore, you've now confirmed that it's a council. Now, yeah. with a council, you're always going to have to deal with a player who's going to be doing something. Like, there's four choices out of a council. So automatically, there's there could be, like, eight choices for Protoss to do right off the start of the game in terms of, like, how they want to branch their build. And now that they've chosen council, this one does still have the most options. But now it's, like, instead mm -hmm. of, like, eight options, now it's down to, like, four. Because the reason why is because yeah. the only thing they're going to do with this council is anything out of the council, blink, like upgrade-wise, so blink, charge, or a resonating glaive, or it could go all the way to oh, like, yeah, D yeah, or it could go all the way to DT tech. So, what you should try to do now is, uh, if you can, is that, like you're still going to have the ability to harass the Protoss, which is kind of how Terran overall plays, and we'll, we'll we'll see how your build develops with what you specifically decide you want to go yeah. for, like if. You said you go for a Cyclone and a Viking. We'll talk. That's super mm -hmm. defensive. We'll talk more about that. But uh, in general, this is going to be a situation where, like, your Reaper follow-up is going to be super important because you get to see what he opens with. And if it can somehow stay alive and you don't just sack it right away, you could also follow up and see what he's building in general on top of that. Uh, okay, here's another huge tip or a huge thing as well. So your Reaper actually... Your Reaper gets gets out, it goes across the map right away, but it kind of chills for a sec. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one thing you should look at as well, here's one thing you, you kind of you kind of missed, which would have been huge. Check this out. First, look at the SCV. Well, your Reaper actually just goes across the map, so right now it's running, it doesn't matter, it's nice. But now your SCV yeah. pokes in, and you see a, a pylon and a core, and you know that since he has a core here, there, you see where the pylon is, you know there should be a gateway next to it as well. <laughs> the reason why is because there is no fucking way that this guy could have had two pylons super fast before he made that nexus mm -hmm. because he's like kind of slamming that nexus down super early and he's cutting costs somewhere yeah. along this build and the place that makes sense where he cut the cost now in this build is look at his gateway and look at his core he's doing nothing hey. with them yeah. he's he's literally just yeah. he, he is not building a unit out of the gateway and he is not starting an upgrade out of the core so in general, what this means is, is and my reaper could get damage as well. Exactly. That, well, that's only one thing. That's only one of the possibilities that it could be. And the, the other possibility is, is that this dude is going to prioritize a tech rush, like because he's that. That's why he's saving the gas out of his gateway and out of his core. Mm -hmm. He's just going to prioritize some tech. And you actually saw that tech super early, and you're you're seeing a council get thrown down as you're like building your marine. So, uh, just know that. It's more expensive for Protoss to get Warp Gate and also their gateway unit than it is for you to make like a Reaper. It would be like essentially you've already mm -hmm. made a Reaper and a Reactor and a Factory. That's what it would be like if this Protoss was making a Stalker a core upgrade and also the Council. Because it's just higher gas cost. So uh, the point I'm trying to make here is, is, yes, number one, this is a huge opportunity for you to slow his build down with your Reaper if you knew he was not making a unit out of the gateway specifically and then also it's an indication that he's not building an upgrade out of the core until after he builds his tech that he's going to do some awkward tech to you and this would be this would make sense for this guy to be the kind of a player now who is going to go for a prioritized tech timing like this very much already the, seeing the fact that he has a council i would not be surprised if this is the kind of player that would generally go for like dts just how it yeah. usually goes is people who want to skip their warp gate and go for tech first, they usually want to do crazy, crazy, crazy tech timings. 
It could still be for like Warp Prism all in, but yeah, that, that is a fucking fast council. So yeah, the Reaper is missing a huge opportunity here by just chilling for a little bit. Uh, we'll come back to your build in a second, but uh, now you go in. Oh wait, kind of. So yeah, that was. I feel like that was probably like twenty seconds, or uh, it was a, quite a bit of time with the Reaper kind of chilled. That could have been like a few probes killed right there. Yeah. Uh, Just cause. Uh, Wally, dude, thank you so much again, man. I appreciate it. I'll, I'll, Wally, I'll definitely uh, talk to you more after the lesson. Uh, thank you so fucking much. You're crazy, dude. Thank you for the 300. Jesus Christ. Much love. Uh, so, basically, your Reaper going in and going out right here. Like, this is, again, a huge missed opportunity. This is you being way too cautious, I would say. So, first things first. Uh, let, we'll, we'll just really, really focus on the Reaper for a second here. Okay. This is where yeah. Micro comes in, right? So Reaper gets to his base, at where it stops, at 223. You don't move the Reaper again until until about like 235, 236. So that was like about 12, 10, 12 seconds of time that, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. went by where nothing was happening with the Reaper. That, if you look at the attack speed of a Reaper, it's less than a second. And a Reaper can attack a probe and kill a probe in about uh, like five hits. So... That, you know, right there, that's fucking huge. And the fact that, you know, that's roughly about two probes automatically you could have killed with the amount of time that you've had here. Now, going and talking about your micro. This and this is huge opportunity here. This is definitely, if we're talking Diamond Plus Terran level, this is the kind of shit you have to, like, really capitalize on. And mm -hmm. first things first, when you get to his base, you run right to the middle line, which is exactly what you should be doing. But you open with a grenade, and I don't necessarily like that. And here's why. You should use a grenade for two reasons. Number one is you want to basically use it as a stun on a unit as you're going to kill it. So if you mm -hmm. think that this guy is going to either like run his probe away, like basically if you're expecting some retention with a unit here, you could try to trap a probe or stun a probe or like knock a probe back towards you. Meanwhile, you're stunning it. You're doing a little bit of a tiny bit of bonus damage. It doesn't really do a lot of damage. One auto attack is more damage value than one grenade. So, <clears throat> essentially, it's it's mostly for the stun. That's all you really use it for. Uh, but yeah, so would I like attack the the closest probes? Because what I have a lot is that I attack the closest probes or drones or whatever. They're in the uh, in the gas. So that matters. So I shoot a couple of times, then they disappear again, and it takes longer for me to kill a probe yes. because I can't just keep firing it. But that okay, so. Uh, this is what matters with time, okay? So, if you have a limited amount of time, if you, if let's just say you have hypothetically six seconds to do damage here, that means you're probably gonna mm -hmm. kill like one probe and get the fuck out of there. That would be, and that's because yeah. there's like a stalker here or something, and he's gonna, you're gonna die if you don't leave immediately. That would be a great time to use a grenade, and you would want to use a grenade. And the way you always want to use a grenade is you want to use it on the opposite side of the probe to where your reaper is. So if your reaper is shooting the probe, you want to use it on the side that will push the probe towards your reaper. So you're, what you're doing right now is you're using a grenade in a way that's going to push the probes away from your reaper. You do not want to do yeah, that. True. So that's number I was one. doing it for the damage. Yeah. yeah and it's definitely, it, it's, it's, <laughs> what it does too is if yeah. you throw a grenade, it wastes an auto attack because it, it, you can't auto attack and shoot at the same time. You have to, you're choosing to grenade and then auto attacking after. And now because you've yeah. done that, you are now going to uh, take it's, it always takes five hits to kill a probe. It's like, think about like, do you know what global cooldown is? Just hypothetically. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like yeah. it, it would have taken five global cooldowns for your Reaper to kill a probe. But now it's going to take six because yeah, it because goes... Yeah, because because now that... Yeah, exactly. The number is going to add up to 37 now instead of 40 with your fifth global cooldown because the, the Reaper's grenade is only five instead of eight. And then you have to go mm -hmm. above that to go to 45. So now... Yeah. It's just going to be a sixth global down to kill a probe, so it's just it's less efficient in terms of just straight up time management okay. here. And then secondly, uh, you again like we, we are, I already I already talked about how you want to aim the probe backwards towards you, so you like guarantee like you get more shots off if time is gonna if he's gonna run the probe or whatever. So that's that's kind of how it goes if you have like limited time and you're just looking to kill one probe, that would be fine because you get more shots off of the probe because you punt it back towards you and it kind of stuns it as well. But now, mm -hmm. if you paid attention okay. to the gateway, building nothing, you have more time now. Instead of having only like five seconds or six seconds to kill a probe, if you would have saw as his core was done, he made no unit, and then you would have confirmed, oh, what the fuck, he made a council. And then let's say you go back to the gateway, 
and he still hadn't started a unit yet, you could automatically go, okay, well, I now know when my Reaper gets into his base, I have an extra 10 seconds, an extra 15 seconds, because he like for, yeah. it, it to be, for it to be standard, a Protoss needs to make a unit the second a core is done, like right away. And that means your that that would mean your Reaper only has like five seconds to do damage, and then or like mm -hmm. maybe like two seconds to do damage, and then the soccer's gonna zone you out. So yeah, so I have to like use the time. He's he's cheating like well he's he's getting his tech faster, so he's skipping on a unit, and I have to capitalize on it. Exactly. I'm yeah. Stand up to get my Reaper in. And yeah. now now it's not killing one probe. Now it's killing multiple probes. So he give you if he gives you a bonus like fifteen seconds. That's going to be now an extra like 15 seconds to kill probes. And if you can kill a probe roughly every five seconds, like it's really more like every four seconds with the attack speed of a Reaper, that's an extra like mm -hmm. three probes you're going to kill now. Uh, and it's yeah. not only that, but it's also just more uh, time that you get to just disrupt his mining because he will probably pull probes around and run around and maybe attack towards you mm -hmm. or run away. Stuff like that. Okay. So <laughs> if you do the situation where you, you don't have to worry about the stalker, getting rid of you right away and it's because of your scv scout what you could do now to manage this the best would be instead of using your grenade to like stun one probe and just use an extra global to like kill the one probe now you could use your, your grenade to use it for aoe and here's how that would go if you get free just shot 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 and all the probes that are just over on the side and you're killing probes like one by one on the gas and maybe you don't kill it on the first pass maybe you kill it on the second pass because you shoot it three times it goes in the gas you shoot another probe three yeah. times it goes in the gas and then you go back to shooting the first probe that took damage and it dies in two more hits and that's fine but if he pulls probes and attacks towards you you grenade where the probes like are going to be and you try to hit like five of them at once and now suddenly you're not hitting one probe with a grenade and doing five damage yeah. and you know now you're doing five probes of five damage now you're literally doing 25 damage to all the probes and it doesn't change how fast that the probes are going to die to the reaper unfortunately so it's not the aoe of that is not necessarily like insane at like oh well you've just now created a situation where you're going to kill the probes faster and that, that would matter more if you had like i guess like another unit there like hellions or some shit there with you too mm -hmm. but the bigger one it does is it aoe stuns a lot of probes which buys your reaper more time as well to keep shooting and to have to move less a little bit and also, it might punt even more probes further into a bad position so that you get a higher chance to kill them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I can be more aggressive. Yeah. You just you should definitely be push, pushing yeah. more with your auto attack, less with your grenade. And then you should use yeah. your grenade as a reaction to, like, punt his probes further from the middle line as he gets four of them off, like right here, for instance. When he, like, pulls towards you, that's when you should use your grenade as he overcommits and you punt them, as they're turning around now to leave, you punt them back into you yeah. to shoot them more. Yeah. Okay. Got it. But that yeah. Makes sense. And then it's like, and again, if you were watching the the stalker out of the gateway, this would be that moment where your reaper could totally be staying here and doing damage. So your reaper kind of just like gets really passive, and he's like, "Ah, I'm out of here." So you killed zero mm -hmm. probes, even though he, even though his stalker was like 15 seconds late or like 12 seconds late, you killed zero probes. And it's because yeah. you threw a grenade early, you ran into your own grenade, you stunned yourself, and then you were really timid about poking the probes. And, yeah, SCV Scout on the gateway could have told you, uh, knowing that he went tech before gateway unit, that is a super delayed stalker, uh, you could have totally done some more damage there. Okay. I like your... Uh, Tenacity, though. You're, like, going to the natural now. But again, if you open with a grenade, this is definitely not what you want to do. So you open with a grenade. Yeah. I, I'm just over microing on, like, I'm a terror and I click other buttons. Yeah, yeah. And the same thing again. You did not kill a unit there. So what no. you want what you want to practice instead is when you have a limited amount of time uh, to kill a probe, again, you only want to use the grenade as a pushback mechanic, not as a damage mechanic. So always make sure whenever you're throwing your grenade, trying to push it towards your Reaper as it detonates. So you want to push it. So if probe is, if your Reaper is behind the probe, you want to put the grenade on the other side of the probe to push it towards the Reaper because it pushes from the center outwards. Yeah, so it gets me an extra shot. Yeah. Exactly. But you also want to practice. If you want to start really managing your units better in an early game like this, and this is kind of just what Terra needs to do with all phases of the game, start practicing Focus Fire. So... What you want to, what you'd want to do, if if you only have a limited amount of time, it is more impactful for you to move command your reaper away from what's killing you, 
and then attack directly on top of the unit you're trying to kill. So it's move, attack, yeah. move, attack, move, attack, and you're moving away from hostile units, and you're attacking always the same unit as you attack, instead of attacking the ground. Yeah. So that's definitely what you want to aim for, because right now you've weakened. Like, it was like two probes in the main middle line got weakened, but only one was about to die, and now you've weakened two probes in the natural. So yeah. that's four different probes that have been attacked that almost died. Like, one of them did, one of the other one in the main only lost shields, but... Four probes that could have potentially died if it was focus, 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 but it was like kind of attack, attack, and then as soon as like the, the, the first time it was like the second another probe came out, you just attack the new hostile probe because you're mm -hmm. a moving the ground, and then the same thing happened yeah. with uh, the stalker. As soon as the stalker arrived, okay. the probe at the natural was super low. It could have taken like two more hits to die, but the stalker started taking the auto attack because you're attacking the ground. So focus fire huge. Uh, and yeah, that's just in general, like Reaper usage, and that, that applies to all units. Now, we'll kind of back yeah. it up and go back to your build now. And this is where, like, for instance, Bunker feels like an automated response, which is... Yeah, I do it every time. It's it's like standard in my build. Yeah, I would say Bunker is good. It's great, okay? It's not a bad thing, but the only thing that would change it would be uh, if you saw that the... Uh, the uh, the Protoss was basically going for a uh, you know a no unit gateway, and it, now you have more time to do damage before the bunker needs to be done. So I'm gonna look yeah. at your build. I just want to look at your build exactly and, and see if you actually prioritize bunker over anything really fast. Because if you do, that's that that would be the negative. But if you don't, then it doesn't matter. So you go factory. I should delay my second gas a little bit. Okay. Well, you you actually put second gas before bunker. So your build is actually fine. I don't actually give a shit when you took the bunker. It is a little early, but it's actually not delaying anything. You still have SAVs going. You still have, are not supply blocked. Yeah. You have a factory and a gas going down before the bunker. If you made these after the bunker, like the factory and the gas after the bunker, that would be a huge problem. It would make no sense uh, for what you've seen. But it the fact that your bunker is actually not hiccuping anything else in your build, this is actually fine. So don't worry about the bunker. It's good. It is nice to have it in general, cool. only because he could walk across the map and poke your reeds with a stalker, and I'm sure that's happened to you before. It's fucking annoying. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, a yeah. lot of times it's really annoying. So Bunker okay. is, in general, super nice to have. And your gas timing is great, too. You, you always want to take your gas as you take the factory, because if you take it way earlier than that, it's just going to be a lot of gas that you need to like be doing like a tech all in with to utilize. But if you're playing macro, yeah. then yeah, the way you took your gas is great. And then uh, one thing as well to note is I know it's it's this is definitely hard to do. Okay, I totally understand. It's it's not something I'm gonna be like, oh, this is easy. Make sure you just do this. But always try to make sure you keep tabs on your add-ons or on your your buildings essentially, because while you've been attacking with this reaper, I know you're trying to get damage done, but unfortunately the reaper literally got no damage done. Uh, yeah. But you've delayed your own units. Like you have not made a single marine since this reactor has been done. And you have not touched your factory since it's been done either. And there's just been time. It's and Time is just continuing to go by where you're not utilizing these yeah, buildings. Yeah, sloppy. Yeah, yeah. so like that. And the same with like the, the the second gas. It's I'm only filling it now. Yeah. So these things, yeah, they definitely will screw you over pretty hard. Uh, just because if like the longer you invest into attacking your opponent with whatever unit you're trying to do, if you get damage done, <coughs> that's wonderful. <coughs> it's always nice to get damage done. Uh, that's always a positive. But if you don't macro behind it, you're indirectly doing damage to yourself. And it puts you in a situation where you have to get damage done to even the game out. It sounds weird, but that's actually how it yeah. works. But if you actually... Yeah, and it's like with... Or go ahead. Yeah. You go, you go. Oh, yeah, it's with, with the Reaper as well, because at, at exactly the time the Reaper goes in, uh, when it's at oh, the, uh, yeah. just outside their base, it's exactly the time I need to wait for the 100 gas to place the factory. So... I've been trying a bit like what do I have to prioritize because if I start with the Reaper straight away, I tend to forget the factory. So I'm, I'm just kind of seeing how I can juggle it a bit. So sometimes the one goes first and the other and I need to like do it quicker. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, it's just, yeah, like it, it always adds up. And the the moment that could happen as well is if your opponent just gets kind of aggressive while you're being, while you're attacking them, they just keep making units and units and units and maybe chrono boosting units or something. Then you macro nothing mm -hmm. behind it. Especially if you get to later stages of the game. Like, the Reaper is not as yeah. deathy, but, like, if you get to, like, the stage where the game where you're already using your starport and you do no damage, suddenly 
you could have a situation happen where uh, you get counter pressured and you're like, oh shit, I didn't macro at all during that, and the counter pressure just kills you because uh, mm-hmm. you just missed out on like the last sixty seconds of macro. Yeah, and it's like extra noticeable in the early stages because uh, well, when we go further, it's, it's like like a zealot attack, and even when I'm bunkered and like walled in. I still get crushed. I'm like, what? Those yeah. are like basic melee units and I lose. But... <laughs> exactly. And the, the huge thing too is the, the better you can macro during your attack, it not only gives you better defense in case you get counterattacked, but it also gives you kill potential on your opponent if you do actually good damage. And then when you finally lose your attack or you have to back off with whatever you're doing and you're like, okay, well, if I go any further, it's going to die. What, you, what could happen then is... You now can actually follow up your previous harass with a real attack and have a high chance of killing them if you've done a great job macroing. It just yeah. it, it's it is what separates good turns from not so good turns. And that is like the core foundation right there. So it's a lot about how you manage your attacks, and about how even furthermore the so like basically I would I would say this if you could manage to macro or, or rather sorry if you could manage to do a good attack okay if you if you could do a lot of damage with your attack. That is what separates Diamond Terrans from, like, Masters or possibly even Grandmaster Terrans. Like, low GM mm-hmm. Terrans, okay? So, that like, just being able to do a good attack, that is that is the difference there. And then if you can do a good attack, but also have insanely good macro, that is what separates the difference of, like, lower GM Terrans now to, like, upper GM to, like, pro-level Terrans. Really high-level Terrans can definitely, they can always do, can, can, can do good attacks, like, get something done with their units. But they can also mm-hmm. follow it up with insane fucking macro. Uh, yeah, and I know yeah, it's when not, it works, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's not easy. I 100 percent can understand that concept. It's not it's something I, I can just say. And it's just oh, I can do that now, easy peasy. It's something that just takes practice and practice. But uh, you, the way you need to do it is you need to be literally every time you're attacking someone, every time you uh, you need to get in the habit of doing this. Every time you move command your units, okay, so not attacking. But, like, if you're like, okay, Reaper's going to bounce from, like, the top right of the middle line down to the bottom left side. Or he's going to bounce from the main to the natural. Or w- whatever you're, you're using. If you ever go into this phase where you're going to move command for at least, like, four seconds or something like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, or, like, two seconds or whatever. Just you're move commanding for a moment. That is when you hit four. Because that's what your production is. And you check your cycle. And then you go back to your unit and recontrol it again. You have to, you have to like, rotate it in well, at least once every, like, ten seconds during your attack. Yeah. And if you could do that, you could be a fucking god at doing this. It's just something, again, it needs practice. It needs to be, you need a lot of experience at doing this, and it'll become more and more comfortable over time. But it is definitely required. Yeah. Yeah, so now I'm starting, like, the Viking, for example. Yeah. And later I was thinking about this game, thinking, if, if it's Blink or if it's Charge, I don't need a Viking. So why am I starting? It's like... I'm always doing it, so I was thinking maybe if I would change the Viking to something else, I would do better. But I, I feel I, the other things we've noted so far will make a bigger impact. <laughs> I would also say, in my opinion, I think the Viking and the Cyclone are a little redundant. And, uh, like, yes, they can both help and be great. And Because, like, if, you, if, you, if it was, like, let's say a Stargate, and you, you didn't know what it was yet, but it happened to be a Stargate, it's like, oh, I can totally shut down an Oracle or a Void or whatever, easy peasy. If it happened mm-hmm. to be a warp prism, you could shut down that warp prism super hard if you focus it with a Viking and maybe even lock onto it with a cyclone. That warp prism will die yeah. so fucking fast. But if it's a front load push, like uh, if it's like straight up blink stalkers with an observer, that cyclone and that Viking together are going to slow down all other aspects of your defense, and it's going to possibly it's going to drastically increase the chances you could die. So yeah, it's like it's very 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 excessive into the specific defense so i would say one or the other would be great here but not both so uh if you for instance if you're gonna go one 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 straight up into a viking that'd be that'd be fine if you're gonna go one 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 and you're gonna add a cyclone into it well you have options now with your starport where you could add on maybe a raven with it or you could add on just a liberator and maybe continue to harass your opponent with it you could add on uh yeah. you know a medevac for defensive purposes but just Viking should only be made if you're not making a Cyclone, in my opinion. Yeah, and I like the Cyclone better than the Viking. Uh, so do I, personally. I, uh, I Yeah, I really, it's it's really cool. You can just, like, patrol it and it kills something that comes in. It's, yeah. it's really good. And it's, it also can help assist in case you get attacked by ground. Like, it, Viking is kind of yeah. like garbage 
if you have to like la if it's like zealots and you're like oh let's land it and it's just gonna get overpowered it's okay against yeah. stalkers but yeah it, it kind of gets to the front line a little bit it could just die so mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> this better be good and then now uh so there's another situation too for Terran where uh, you really have to be choosy about how you want to open, uh, like beyond one one one. So just know, barracks command center into factory starport is totally fine, but it's really technical mm -hmm. after that point when you have three production buildings, the one one one. What do you want to do after that? If you want to do what you just did just now, where you go one 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 into three racks total. This now puts mm -hmm. you in a situation where you have to do damage. You do not... Yeah. Like, you can still take a third command center behind this, and that's fine. But you, if you don't do any damage and you just take a third CC, you are going to be behind. Like, you... Yeah. So, your your build now is in the category of aggression. You have to do an attack uh, once you're ready to go with whatever you want to go for. And the fact that you're going for a tech lab factory and you're going for three reacts, one reactor, one tech lab, and I imagine the next one's going to be a reactor. You might even swap it over from the starport. This yep. looks like it's going to be a tank marine timing with something mm -hmm. supporting in the air, probably medevac. Uh, and if you do this, this again, it, it just needs to do something that could get you some damage done. And the best way to do it in a game like this, honestly, I would say, uh, would be if your Reaper goes out on the map. Where is your Reaper right now, actually? Okay, it's at his third. Perfect. I, so I, that's, I, I, somehow, I don't know why I didn't see it there, but that's exactly what I would want you to do. I would want you to check the Protoss' third bases. And here's how you could tell what would be a smart idea. So, you don't only have to think about your build, okay? You have to also think about how your opponent's build matches up against your build. And <clears throat> what that means is, is if this guy is going for a council, and he does not take a third base, what, what happens is, is your build has a later, like, on effect than your opponent's does like it takes longer for your build to like come online than it does for his mm -hmm. because blink stalkers can happen faster than stay back marines because and the reason why is because you're not opening up with a barracks tech lab stim pack that's not your build if it was no. you could be aggressive if you was if you were doing like straight up just three racks only with no starport no factory then yes you could be aggressive but your build is one 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 into you know Units with this set, yeah, set up, one. and yeah. then and then it be and then it finally becomes a rax with a tech lab with a stim pack upgrade. So your build is super fucking late, with in terms of like when it goes online, which is when stim pack finishes. That's when you go. So if you look mm -hmm. at his build, you look at your build, and he does not take a third base, you should play defensive until he attacks you, and then you counterattack him. And yeah. it's it's because his build would be two base blink, which is just faster than than one 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 into eventually stim pack later. But it would yeah, be and then the, the zealots come in. Yeah. So like and, like also so like it could be charge, it could be blink, like it doesn't have to and, and we see now what he's doing, exactly. But it, like there were options that could have happened for what he was going to go for. Uh most commonly mm -hmm. I would say most paralysis do open up with blink, uh if it's gonna be something standard. So a third base would pair more with blink. <coughs> if he only takes a, two bases and that's it. <coughs> and oh sorry excuse me uh if he only goes two bases and uh, that's it and then he, let's just say on top of that uh he uh he rushes like you saw early in the game where he goes council before getting a fucking unit out of the gateway that is something that could be more likely for a all-in and charge lot is definitely mm -hmm. all in so yeah. yeah charge lot could totally make sense too because he rushed the council so now if we think oh not only is he going council first but also he went council before he made a single gateway unit. That increases the chances that we're going to get all in here, which increases the chances that you should react by playing defensive initially. Even though you're going for an aggressive build, his is just more aggressive than yours. So you mm -hmm. absorb and then you counter is what you should aim for. Yeah, when you say like play defensive, what what kind of alteration would you make at that moment? Because I get a lot of games where I see I need to be defensive, like a two rex spam something or a lot of salad rushes, DT rush, now you name it. So, and then I notice it, but then what? I, I don't know how to change my build at that moment. So what you should aim for <clears throat> is kind of what you've done already. I like it. Uh, I like where your cyclone's located. I like how it's patrolling that area. I love how you fucked up your wall, though, but I love the idea. And the reason why you fucked up your wall is because there is a gap on the top of your depot. You did not actually yeah. wall this, so that he could literally run into your base still. 
Uh, but the the concept of actually making a wall that is an amazing choice to do for defensive purposes. The only thing I don't like is where your Viking is located. Your Viking should actually be the open airspace of the left side of your main base. Like maybe, uh, like if you look where your cyclone is, like directly left of that in the open airspace where like those bushes are, those like plants, that'd be a great place to like patrol your Viking. And the reason why is because if he drops, you're natural. You have a bunker to fall back with and repair. And if it comes down to it, yeah. where like, let's just say he warps in everything into your, into your natural, you could like either path block the zealots or whatever it happens to be there by repairing it on the mm -hmm. inside of your bunker. Or you can even lower a depot and get more surface area to repair your bunker if you want to fully surround it. If it comes down to it, if you feel like that would be a good idea. But yeah, then you can always bring your units like the Cyclone and the Hill or the Cyclone and the Viking back to your natural if he chooses to attack your natural, and that's fine. But if he attacks your main base and he gets a warp in, so let's say the warp prism comes in and it unloads, 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 like current existing zealots inside of it, and then he prism modes it and then he warps in a full fresh round. If you don't have enough DPS to just wipe out that prism right away, so if, you, if your lock-on gets wasted on a zealot or something like that, and I'll t even furthermore, if the viking that you've made, which slows down everything else about your build, because if you didn't make a viking, things could be faster, uh, mm -hmm. if that viking does nothing to stop those zealots warp from warping in, the second he gets a warp in round in your base, and now you actually lose control of the prism area, and because he's pushing you back with zealots, and it buys him time to continuously warp in zealots, suddenly the problem now becomes much more severe, and it's really because you lost control of your base, and you don't yet have stim pack, yet he has charge. So having control of mm -hmm. your base is very important right now. So everything you've done so far, other than depot wall being a little misplaced, but the the concept is great, and the Viking being misplaced uh, should be near the cyclone. Everything else is fine so far. Okay. And now that you see a bunch of units in front of your natural kind of pairing up, I like that you have a bunch of marines near your doorway, but those should those should maybe be near a depot, and you should already have pulled SCVs. Yeah. Because you've you've you I feel like you've reacted to it by moving the, the boys on the bunker, or like maybe you're mm -hmm. like I feel like you know this is happening. Uh, uh, you know, like well, actually, I'll back your camera up just for a second. And I'll yeah, see I, could, it. I could see them a, a couple of seconds before, so okay. I see some zealots moving. Okay. So, yeah, exactly. Like, you actually like saw moment it. I was fixing a supply block. <laughs> yeah. So, what you should be aiming for, 100%, is preparing SCV repairing. So, you should have already yeah. pulled what you what you think the surface area of what exists there on your side of the bunker. Like, I would never tell you, yeah, lower those depots right now. That's definitely not a good idea, because what you can do as well is you can limit the surface area of which the zealots can hit your bunker. So, if you mm -hmm. match whatever zealots are on the bunker on one side to SCVs repairing on the other... There is a very high chance you are going to kill either his whole army or you're going to kill, even if your bunker still breaks, you're just going to kill so much more of what he has. Uh, that's going to thin out his army, which increases your chances you're not going to die if the bunker did break. Yeah. But if you if you pull SCVs as the bunker's already taking damage, the chances of you actually getting to repair that bunker are very low. And the reason why is because bunker health is not that crazy high for damage that's going to be absorbing. So it's really about like yeah. repairing as it happens, not trying to repair after it's happened. So you need to already okay. be prepared. Like as it's taking damage from 400, as it starts taking damage, you're already repairing it back to 400 or trying your best to like maintain that. That way, if he does have more DPS, let's just say your, your SCVs to like the DPS that the bunker's taking is like he does 30 more damage than what SCVs repair. So every second it goes down by 30. It's still being repaired, but it just continues to go down by 30 because it's too much DPS. Yeah. It would yeah. buy your bunker like, you know, like 10 seconds or 15 seconds or something like that before it could die. But if you have, if you start repairing the bunker with the fact that you're going to be losing like 30 health on the bunker a second through the damage that's on it and then also the repairing that you're able to put on it, let's say uh, you start repairing it at when the bunker's only like at 90 hit points, it's only going to last three seconds and then it's dead anyways. Yeah. And if you don't repair it at all, well, that's just a massive missed opportunity, which is like right here. No repair at all is now you've killed one zealot. You've almost killed three, but you killed one zealot and the bunker broke. That could have gone so much better for you. Where if you just repaired yeah, that I bunker. I think repairing would help a lot. Yeah. Because yeah, repair, uh, in general, I, I don't, I, uh, I can't tell you exactly. I, this is something I should know. I don't know why I don't know this. I can't tell you exactly <laughs> how much an SCV repairs number wise a second on a building. I, I don't think it's percentage wise either. I think it's just an SCV literally repairs something around like. 
maybe Ted Health of the building a second. That's roughly probably what it is. And if you could repair yeah. Ted Health a second for like let's say five SCVs at a line could repair that bunker. That's like fifty health a second repairing that. And if you have four, uh, rather if you have five oh, zealots smacking it, yeah. and you have one stalker and a sentry, that is. Uh, Thanks for all the guys. Thank you very much for the subs, guys. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, if you have a zealot hitting the bunker like about once a second, roughly, it's a little bit faster, but it's about once a second. Uh, that does eight damage times two. And if you have a stalker hitting it yeah. about once a second, uh, it's a little bit later than that, but it's about 18 damage a second, like roughly. And if you have a sentry that can hit it a little bit faster than once a second, but it does six damage. The bunker also has one armor passively. So now these units are going to be doing seven damage times two a second. Eight, uh, 17 damage yeah. a second like you just add it all up if you have 50 health re being repaired roughly versus all this damage added up it kind of almost negates itself and even though it might be a little bit steeper at the side for protoss because all you have is melee repairing he has melee units hitting the bunker plus range units hitting the bunker so you can't just like there's no way you can counter the range you don't have like SUVs range repairing it essentially yeah. uh there is a good chance your bunker could still break but these zealots if your bunker did break you would thin out, instead of only one zealot, you might thin out like six zealots. And if in total... Yeah, and if it buys some time for reinforcements and everything. So. Ex exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. You would have more marines out by the time it breaks. You would have closer yeah. to stim pack by the time it breaks. You would have closer to a siege tank when it breaks. He would have less zealots when it breaks. So like mm -hmm. the chance of you just overpowering what breaks through the wall, if it does even break at all, is just higher. So repair, yeah. repairing okay. needs to fucking happen. It's so important. And, and when you repair, what... what do you like uh, select the SCVs and click the bunker, or yeah, do you so like what move you them do, near and do the auto repair thing? What, what you, there's two ways you could repair. Okay, number one is you could again. You would just want to you estimate it. You go, how many SCVs do I feel like I need to repair that bunker? And if the answer is five, try to green box like five SCVs off your middle line. Right click the the bunker. Like you could right you could even like right click the depot on the left because. Uh, it's the, it gets your SCVs all going that direction. They don't just bottleneck on the right side of the bunker and like do a little like clumped up circle on the on the far right side. Uh, so if you click like the depot and like as the SCVs are kind of spread alongside the bunker because they're walking towards the depot on the left, you then spam right you like spam right click the bunker so that every SCV gets like they're hugging the bunker essentially. What you could do then mm -hmm. is you could manually tell the SCVs repair the bunker over and over and over and over while you're macroing marines out and your tank out and making more scvs and still macroing and stuff like that that is one way you could do it you just want to make sure they're always repairing it because if they ever repair all the way to max and let's say they stop repairing because all the SVs go we've repaired it it's full hp and the bunkers yeah, takes damage again they'll stop repairing it and if you don't tell them to repair it yeah. again they just stop another thing you could do is you can spam right click the bunker and make them all hug the bunker as hard as possible and then tell them to hold position while they're now meleeing the bunker, essentially, like they're on top of it, and you can right-click auto repair, so they're on hold position auto repair. So they're just being told anything in their radius of touching needs to be repaired yeah. if it's taking damage, and that would mean every time it takes damage on the bunker or an SCV hugging another SCV takes damage, they would repair each other and repair the bunker. Either one of those ways okay. works. Neither one is like, oh, this is just vastly superior. It doesn't matter, but they both work. Uh, yeah, okay. I would, I, I, I would just say in general, the. Uh, the the you specifically telling your SCVs to repair a bunker, not SCV, is more realistic to making sure the bunker is always the thing getting repaired, and your SCVs by chance are not uh, <coughs> they're not getting caught up trying to repair each other while the bunker just dies. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and then yeah, that would be how that would go. Uh, but that if, yeah, yeah that that is so far everything that's happened in this game that is the most important thing that has been missed is repairing the bunker. Okay. And now that it broke. This is now going to yeah. potentially spiral out of control for you, and you know you're. This is going to be a yeah. Now I'm like these are yeah. Now I'm like uh, a bit sour. Like, just silly zealots. I hate zealots. They're way too tanky. But that's a turn perspective. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like they're, they're fucking super tanky. I agree with you. And the the big problem for you is is they're upgraded and your marines are not. So you're fighting like imagine if you were fighting the slow zealots with stimpak marines. You would destroy them. Yeah. You would walk into his base, mm -hmm. and he would like slowly waddle towards you, and you would just be like, "Stim, stutter, 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 stutter," and all the zealots are dead. So, you needed that bunker to stay alive, and it's because you did not open three racks stim pack right away. You opened one, one, one into late stim pack. So you need to do something defensive, and like the yeah. again, the concept you had is great. The wall you made was perfect. You just didn't 
reinforce your wall with repair, which is that needs to happen. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I got that. And then uh your build order is totally fine. I actually don't mind it. Your build order is actually like great. So I I think your build order is the best aspect of your gameplay so far. It's everything is looking good. Your your gas timings are nice, your engineering bay timing is nice, your reactor of uh, your starport reactor popping and then swapping over is nice. Everything about your build is good. It's a good build. It's yeah, just thanks. make sure the one thing I can harp on about your build is is just try to make sure that you keep macroing during other things. Yeah. Defensively, you did a pretty decent job. Aggressively, you there was a lot of room to, for improvement. Uh, so just make sure when you attack your opponent with stuff, like for instance the Reaper or anything else, you're always trying to maintain that macro. Yeah. And then from yeah. this point on, what should happen in your build is, the next building you should make uh, would have honestly been another command center. So that you could actually pressure with two base and yeah. go into three base. Yeah, but again, it isn't. Yeah, that's another thing I would. I wanted to ask you, like, there's like different things how to to continue. I could like do extra barracks first, or I could do like the so upgrades earlier. This is what I would classify your build as right now. Is it's aggressive? If you made more barracks mm -hmm. again from this point on, your build is now all in. You should not even bother making another command center uh, at the moment because if you do, all that's gonna all that would do. If you have like let's say five racks, one factory, one starport, and you're trying to also get upgrades. If you make another command center, it's gonna it's gonna like cease production in some of your units. So yeah, and it's gonna it's gonna like why would there be bunkers being made so in such succession like so fast if you're gonna just stop building units out yeah. of them? So if you actually yeah. wanted to go to like five racks, that's kind of like you need to constantly pump 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 units nonstop, and it's gonna be like stretching your economy as thin as possible if you're also adding in depots to create to grow your supply and upgrades to grow your power of your units in the form of st of stim pack. Combat shield one one two two things like that, and then yeah. uh, you could even at that point you could just like lift off and rotate your command centers if the like the game wasn't over but you were still doing damage. You could be like, oh main base is mining out, let's li lift and land at our third base. Like like again, this is all about like if you have not broken your opponent yet, you need to fucking be aggressive for this to make sense because if you stop being aggressive, mm -hmm. you're just committing to the fact that you are behind. Yeah, uh, that's what I like a lot about it. Because you have to be aggressive, and that makes you like get into the game earlier. Yeah, it's like you, know, you have to make trades and the silly positions with the tanks. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and that's where like being aggressive and macroing during the process matters a lot too. Because that's also you might think to yourself, oh well, I have five racks of factory and a starport, and I'm getting upgrades and all this other shit, but I could still afford a third command center. I don't know what Vibe's talking about. And that would if that was the case, it's probably because if you're attacking your opponent, you missed like 25 In seconds case, of macro. Yes. Exactly. Now, yeah. now you have a ton of money, and you're like, I guess I might as well expand, because you just didn't fucking parade push your opponent or something like that, like you should have, to yeah. maximize power of this build. So yeah, more production beyond this point would classify all in, or it has a chance to go yeah. further in macro. But either way, it needs to be aggressive. It's just you need to, you need to classify your aggression logically, as yeah. in going, what is my opponent doing, and is it more aggressive than what I'm doing? If the answer is yes, I counterattack with aggression. If the answer is no, I initiate aggression. So if you yeah. if you would if you would have seen your opponent going for like a third nexus super fast at like four minutes, and they're going for like five stalkers, but they're playing this like shield battery stalker defensive gameplay with fast nexus probe counts, uh, then I'd be like totally fucking attack his ass. Go timing that third base or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's how you would read that uh, for that kind of a situation. Yeah, cool. And so when when I do well in this game, I can't make the push up because usually I do when stim is finished and my uh, two medevacs pop out. That's when I usually just round up everything and go to the other side. Yeah. Would yeah. you have like any general uh, tips or ideas of where to attack? Because should I like if I attack his latest expansion, sometimes I just run into his army, and then so if I get stalled a bit, that, I lose my advantage. That comes down to what makes sense again, and if. Your opponent is going to be going for a situation where they're going to be uh, super defensive with extra economy and shit like that. You, 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 let's say you have done no fight yet. And let, let's just say um, the, the, the 9 o'clock base, middle left. Let's say your opponent has a nexus there. And they're getting ready to set up mm -hmm. uh, a, you know, a situation where they want to fight there. A great way to set up a fight, if you have not yet fought their army and you feel like they, have a real, they, could, they could have a very realistic defense. If you want to break the third, that's totally fine. And you're going to go for tank marine medevac. Maybe set up your tanks mm -hmm. in a situation where they're going to be tucked away, where they can still range well 
into your your opponent's base, but they're going to not be like in the middle of nowhere. So look at yeah. like look at the middle left base again, and now look at the bottom gas. Yeah, like this. How there's like a cliff there. You can put like yeah. one or two tanks on the lower side of that cliff, and then you could have marines, uh, like run up into the nexus area, and you could you could actually pull them back down and as a zealots or whatever engage you. You could run south below the gas on the high ground. And then as the zealots yeah. get really close to connect, load up into medevacs and go down and drop on your tanks. And then zealots can still be seen by the medevacs, and your, your tanks are getting just pounding zealots, mm -hmm. pounding zealots. And by the time yeah. they go around the cliff, all your marines will be dropped out of the medevacs, or the majority of them will be. You stim again, yeah, you could, and you just kill whatever's you left over. Beat it. Yeah. Yeah. And another way okay. to do it would be, if you look at the, the again, 9 o'clock base, look at the middle right, how there's like that terrain of those trees. Where you can like yeah. do something similar, where you can just have your tanks tucked away, and you can just cover the tanks to where you always want to bait your opponent into a position where, as soon as they get to like connecting to your bio, you always have the ability to load and, l and move over a cliff and land on your tanks. Those are the yeah. most okay. abusable terrain locations. And then now, let's just say you were like, "Oh, I know he's got a third, but I don't want to fuck with a third. It's fine." You can do the same yeah. exact thing on his natural. Look at the right side of the the weeds and stuff on his natural, where kind of his fourth base is. If you tucked tanks on that lower end of that cliff there, but like next to the tree line, you could not only kill the high ground main base so near his ramp area, you could also kill the side of his nexus with marines and bait him to that cliff again. Like go all the way yeah. back to the edge of the cliff and then when, as soon as he connects, do not just stand there and lose a bunch of marines. Instantly load up and you could either load up and then land in his main base on the high ground cliff or you could load up and land on your tanks. Yeah. So okay, cool. Like layered platform is what you want to work with. You you don't want to work with open terrain. Like you would never. I would never say, okay, you want to you want to siege your tanks in the open area, right, wide open area in front of his natural. Like that big, just like where his kind of zealots kind of standing right now. Just go right there. Like what that. The only time that would ever make sense is if you did not go for any type of a macro follow up. Like if your build was like super fast gas yeah. the earliest tanks possible and you were going to pull SCVs and like go build bunkers or something in his in his face that would be okay yeah. there because you're doing this like super aggressive almost like semi all in timing where it's like this like massive punch that you invested into and that like you did nothing else like you're not trying to go for stim pack you're not trying to do these other bullshit but things you're just going for the timing and it's tank focused that would be okay to do it there then because you're going to build buildings there and it's just going to happen like that but if your timing is mm -hmm. going to be more like stable it's just like for it has a, the ability yeah. to develop into a macro game but it's you're waiting for upgrades that are eventually going to happen like stim always abuse terrain as much as possible which means abuse cliffs okay. that you can up leapfrog up and down over yep okay cool yeah but, so yeah. like in, in general you'll say like i, I need to get so more aggressive especially at, at the start you definitely need to be um, because uh your build is definitely aggressive yeah if your build yeah, was that, a third command center after the starport, and then you made more racks with upgrades, yeah, that was different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you could be, then you could always be reactionary defense. So that the, what you could do then is you could maybe do like one medevac, and that's it. Just have like marines, and you just maybe like drop into the back of a mineral line and go. Let's see if I can get you to be aggressive by poking your economy and making you feel pressured, and then you force a reaction out of your opponent if you do a good job doing that. It's not a timing. It's not an all in. It's just harass. And then if yeah. you can actually kill economy and make your opponent feel threatened by going, shit, okay, that sucks. I lost, like, 12 probes. I need to do something now. I'm going to go attack. You force a reaction out of them to attack you. You absorb defensively because you've invested into economy. So what that does is it makes your army grow at a faster pace later. But it's not about doing a timing attack early. It's about harassing early. So if you can force yeah. a reaction out of them to attack you, it creates a very high power spike for you in terms of a counter attack. Yeah. So those are the general ideas of how you'd want to play it. You do not want to do economy yeah. investments and then do timing attack as well. That makes no sense. It's going to always yeah. fail. Uh, so uh, uh, and if you do do a a bit of a timing with like 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 because again the only reason why I'm even telling you to do an attack with like the tank placements of the leapfrogs up and down high grounds is because you went three racks after starport. So it is aggressive now. It, it is extra production, mm -hmm. which is going to increase. It's not going to be like two tanks, two medevacs, and six marines. It's going to be like two tanks, two medevacs, and 20 marines. So you're going to have yeah. a much higher power s spike in that push that's going to, uh, you know, potentially break your opponent or something. Yeah. Okay. So, well, like, in general, you're saying that the build is fine also, like, in every matchup at the moment. Uh, your build right now? 
like this build. Yeah, like, I'm, yeah. I, I think this build you're doing right now would work in uh, Zerg versus Protoss, and also Zerg versus uh, or Zerg versus Terra. Or Jesus, I don't know why I keep saying Zerg. <laughs> Terran versus uh, Protoss and Terran versus Zerg. This build would work in those. I don't actually think this build would work very well, especially the way you open it with like Heli the Cyclone Viking. It would be kind of scary mm -hmm. in Terran versus Terran, but if you just altered the way you opened it, yes, the idea of going 1-1-1 one, one, one into two more racks could totally work in TVT as well. Just the whole concept of Viking and, and Cyclone, would you would get shit on so hard in TVT if you do that, I feel like. That would be scary. Uh, and like I think Viking uh, Raven is great, and the reason why that's super good is because Raven's so nice at like, controlling tanks early game, and then you could go into yeah. Biotank Marine. Or, like, Tank Marine Medivac, sorry, after that. So this overall mm -hmm. concept of build makes sense in every matchup. It's fine. It's just yeah, the Viking needs to be Watch changed. A bit. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool. I'll work on that. Nice. Um, and, uh, but, yeah, again, your build is great. It's totally fine. Uh, the power, the, the time when you should be doing a timing should definitely be when Stimpak is done. That would be a great power mm -hmm. spike timing to go for, and that should... Honestly, you should have roughly two medevac, two tank, and somewhere in the ballpark of like 18 to 20 marines. Uh, I would say another thing to note, do not make marauders against Terran or Zerg. Only make marauders mm -hmm. against Protoss with this. Yeah. And then, yeah, you'll be fine. Uh, Marauder is definitely not... like the, the Honestly, the only reason why I would say marauder even would make sense against Protoss is not even because like even though this is a real thing, it, like, Marauders are good against Stalkers. They're good against Immortals. They're good against Colossus at, like, killing those units faster. But it's not even really why I would say you'd want to make Marauder. And the reason why that is is because you're making tanks that fill that role already. The real mm -hmm. reason why I would say Marauders could make sense, and you could only even need, like, three of them or something like that. Not even a lot. Just, like, two or three. Is because that if you are baiting your opponent into attacking into your tanks by dropping him and loading up and dropping again... And he's like, fucking, guy, like, I go around the cliff and go attack these tanks. And he's using a bunch of zealots to do that. Marauders will absorb the damage of zealots better than marines would. Because not only do they have passive armor. Like, a, a marauder has one passive armor by default, which is huge against a zealot. Mm -hmm. But it also has almost three times the health of a marine without combat shield. That would increase the, like, the durability. of. It's almost like having a bunker, a mobile bunker for your marines, essentially. If you have, like, three marauders in front of your marines... You have like a bunker in front of your marines that just like is just holding the line essentially, yeah. uh, and it would just increase the damage of your marines because it would keep them alive longer. So that would be fine. But against Zerg and Terran, you don't need to make marauders uh, if you're making tanks. Yeah. Okay. No, oh, nice, nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, so I feel like now if we're talking about this game specifically, you are dead now. And it's because, again, yeah. we're going all the way back to you didn't repair the bunker. That's the only thing you really fucked up on. That is that the most drastic thing you fucked up on. Was if that bunker was repaired, I 100% see you defending this attack. Because he's not even reinforcing right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is hopeless. Yeah, and then, uh... Because, like, right now, for, what, I, what I mean as well by him not reinforcing this attack is he has now, finally now, like, t about 90 seconds to, like, two minutes. Like, more like 90 seconds after this attack has happened. He is now finally about to bring a war prism to your base. So, he just straight up warped in zealots at his side of the map and walked across the map each time he wanted to attack you. Mm -hmm. And that would admit that, like, the zealots that were dying on your bunker the first time when you were repairing it... They would all have been dead already before the second wave of zealots actually got there because they literally had to cross the map. Yeah. Yeah, and then my, my stim would have hit. And, and then when you got stim, it's exactly. uh, you have so much more options. Yeah. Hey, yep, and if you didn't even lose okay. the bunker, you would have probably, at this point now, you would have probably had like 30 or like 26 to 30 marines because you already have yeah. lost. Look at how many units you've lost. You have 55 units, and I, obviously that's not all marines. Some of those are depots, buildings, SCVs. Uh, but if we look at like. If we think about how many Marines have died, I bet that's probably in the range of like 20 to like 25 Marines have already died. Yeah. So you would probably be around 30 right now, Marines, and you would be just fucking demoral like demolishing this attack. Because also, here's mm -hmm. the crazy thing. You have Stimpak. He does not have a Forge upgrade yet. He doesn't even have a Forge period. So 
not only would you wreck his zealots, <clears throat> especially if it's a choke point or like behind a bunker with Marines just thinning him down, but as soon as plus one is done, it's going to go even more drastic in your favor. Like you would just be murdering these zealots with plus one Marines with like 30 plus of them. Mm hmm. And then that would be a situation where you could counterattack. You would probably win the game with that. But while you have control, you could then start a third command center. Yeah. Yeah, funny because when I started, it felt like, oh, well, not really a build or a loss, but he's, yeah, he had like a stronger build or something. But when you analyze it this way, it's like, oh, yeah, like, like the harassment could have been better. That's where, yeah. he, where he left space for me to act. And then uh, especially the repair. Like, yeah, I would honestly say I, I almost never repair stuff. So that's, that's your, should work on that your build well. was actually better than his. And the reason why your build's better than his is because his build is naked zealots. Just They just have charge. It's just, it's, other than charge, they're just naked zealots that have literally no support of anything else. It was one stalker and one sentry. And those are what he opened mm -hmm. the game with. He opened stalker first and the sentry second, and then he just made zealots. Uh, but one stalker yeah. and one sentry cannot support shit for zealots. And if you actually just mowed down his attack, and then you launched a counterattack, because again, you would have analyzed he's more aggressive than you, you would be currently mm -hmm. breaking his base with tank marine, into bases that have literally nothing but zealots and he would be trying to tech into sky toss because that's what he's doing now he's going fleet beacon stargate and he would have no mm -hmm. way to stop your marines from running his bases over he would be killing base after base after base because zealots would just like one wave of zealots would warp in out of his existing uh uh six gateways and six gateways of zealots make six zealots which walk into 30 plus marines and six zealots walking into 30 yeah, plus die. marines would just be yeah. like like they all, all just scream together and just die immediately and <laughs> yeah. then uh and then if you if you get to that point even furthermore where for whatever reason he's actually managed to like maybe now you've killed his fourth base you've killed his third base you're currently killing his second base and while you're killing a second base maybe he made two carriers maybe and they popped out of that those stargates and they have zero upgrades as well and now your marines might even be like two one or like one one or you know maybe you've now you've You've had more time that has gone by where you could you could have made an armory, a second engineering bay, and you could have started yeah. another, and at least one, maybe two more upgrades by the, by you know getting your armor and maybe even plus two weapons. You would even if it's just plus one marines and that's it. Two carriers with no upgrades, with not even full interceptors yet, because it takes a lot of time to do that. Flying over to like thirty five marines, and you're just like yeah, stim pack, and then eight, like four interceptors out of two carriers, so eight in total, fly into like thirty five marines. Not even one marine dies, and all interceptors just like pop, 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 and interceptors are gone. Because interceptors only kill marines if they're overwhelming marines by like, you know, if there was like yeah. 35 marines versus like 30 interceptors, then yeah, interceptors would win. Yeah. Yeah, this replay is over for the rest. Yeah, yeah I know. It's it's pretty oh, dead. Cool. But about yeah. anything else that happened, do you have any other, any questions about anything that doesn't make sense? No, I, th I think this this happens a lot that I like scout that there's like an aggression and I'm thinking, oh shit, how, how to react to it? It's really, uh, there's not like, it's, it's not always easy to find online how to react. Like I, I got DT spammed some time ago and I'm like, uh, do I like need, do I need to, uh, I needed to save uh, scans, I thought. So like learning to analyze is, is a skill as well. But, uh, yeah, I, I think for this is a good one. So it gives me a bit of um, confidence that my, my build is decent and I can like advance from on here. And yeah. I can focus more on the aggression earlier. I, I really like that as well. It's really fun playing Terran that way. Yeah. And here's a cool tip as well. If you ever see a Protoss player do what this guy did, where uh, let's say they prioritize their council, and you're like, okay, council priority. He didn't even make a gateway unit. Like, looking at that is huge. If, they, if, if he yeah. gives you that information like he just did this game, you could be like, okay, this guy is more likely a tech player. And then let's just say, hypothetically, he does not attack you with anything by five minutes if you just and at that point too that's your, your your build does not need to change at all but if you actually went okay at five minutes he has not attacked me yet or even if he is attacking you and it's like something like this where you're like he's not actually attacking me with blink stalkers or adepts it's just charge lots so like it's, mm -hmm. it's it's literally fucking charge lot heavy you could do something like for instance follow up with uh like one missile turret per base because it may here here's why it makes sense Players who go for a tech priority are literally, that's exactly what it is. It's a tech priority because it, uh, mm -hmm. uh, if he wanted to go for a, um, <coughs> uh, like the fat, if you wanted, if this guy, all he wanted to do was the fastest, craziest, strongest, earliest 
charge the all-in he could possibly do. Like the best version of it. What he should do is he should totally get a warp gate upgrade early, like right away. He should then get rush a council right after and non-stop chrono boost that council, chrono boost the council, chrono boost the council for charge. And, and like, as soon as he makes the council second, he, and he has a little bit of gas, he would immediately make the robo third. And he would maybe throw one chrono at the robo to make a warp prism to like fly across the mm -hmm. map and get in your base. But then he would be able to time it in a way where if he chrono boosts constantly on the council, he chronos the warp gate zero, and then he chrono boosts the, war the robo once. So he chrono boosts the prism, chrono boosts charge, but he does not chrono boost warp gate. All of these things would be hitting your base roughly around the same time. And then he could attack you by probably like either just under five minutes or right about five minutes. And it would be a crazy powerful like seven gate timing. And this is also where your Reaper Scout came in handy where it's like, is he taking a third or is he not taking a third? And if you don't see a third mm -hmm. by like five minutes, five minutes is a great time to know if a Protoss is going to be super aggressive or not. So if a Protoss does not mm -hmm. have a third by five minutes, you should be expecting aggression. Uh, yeah. And if he doesn't have, like for instance, if you saw a tech, tech focus scout, or like your, your scout saw a tech focus out of Protoss, especially that it's a council first, like five minute turrets <clears throat> would be a great way to go. If there are DTs as a follow up, I won't die to it. Now, granted, these DTs yeah. in this game are much later, but this guy went to four bases mm -hmm. and he went sky toss before he went DTs. So, like, yeah. he actually teched all the way to Fleet Beacon and then made a Dark Shrine. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's super late. But <laughs> if you took, like, five-minute yeah, turrets, yeah. Yeah, it's still Diamond, but... <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's fine. Yeah. <clears throat> but, okay, cool. Yeah, just... And, it, again, the, the big, the big, big, big incentivizer, or, like, the big... The, under thing, the thing you need to understand is someone who tech priorities, that is a sign of aggression. Just, like, you going for two more racks after Starport is a sign of aggression. But the even bigger mm -hmm. one is, is uh, someone who goes for, uh, uh, like, just council is a, set, a sign of aggression, but someone who goes council before making a gateway unit is an even bigger sign of aggression. Like, that yeah. is, they're and I was really thrown off because I saw, like, his expansions, and I'm like, I'm scouting an expansion, and then in my head I think, oh, an expansion, so he's going for an eco build. But then I scout the Twilight as well, and I'm, like, confused, and that's... Well, it's delayed I'm, aggression. Yeah, I, so yeah. it's, it's all about timer. Like, if you see someone who expands, automatically take like three minutes in your head and go for the natural only. This does not apply to the third base. This does not apply to the fourth base and any base beyond that. It only applies mm -hmm. to the natural. If somebody yeah. takes a natural, the only thing they will do to up to the point of like maybe four and a half minutes in the game or like five minutes in the game is harass. So if someone attacks you, uh, like, you know, if someone, if you, if you see, oh, I see a one racks expand, and I see a one gate command or a one gate nexus. You should not expect that player to all in you at like three minutes. That's just not going to happen. Yeah. Like they're yeah. if they're going to attack you with an all in or like a heavy timing, it's going to be around five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Like, but if you don't see an expansion, then yes, you could get, you could get all in by like minute number like one thirty or like two minutes. Because there's no expansion, it's instead like all gates or yeah. all all racks or something like that. Yeah, yeah, and then I can hold it at my at my uh, main because that's walled anyway. So it's yeah, it's exactly. Changing. And you can just lift yeah. off the command center. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I mean when when you're really going to play the game now because sometimes you just read the build. It's, it's it can be confusing. The Zerg do it as well. They take an expand real quick and then some minutes later it's like hundreds of circling to like huh? i thought you're doing some eco stuff <laughs> yeah and that's why uh, also i'll learn with Terran, well, yeah. with Terran too you like I, I did say this early on in the, in the lesson I'll, I'll just uh, reiterate it one more time really fast just because I, I didn't really touch on it too much i just kind of bypassed it a little bit but Terran is aggressive they like no matter what your build mm -hmm. is you are playing the race that needs to be aggressive as a whole so some builds go deeper into the aggression than others some builds go more into the uh into the uh like the macro stage of others but if you remember how i like for instance i talked about like if your build went for like a command center after your starport you would react with aggression you would not initiate aggression but even mm -hmm. if even if that was what you were doing i uh, the thing i mentioned which is super important for terran you would still be doing harass even though you're not going for aggression you're still harassing which is still attacking so even though you're not yeah. going to try and do like a full-on timing to your opponent you're still trying to do shit like have a one medevac killing probes because that w that is your form of scouting. Like yeah. you, you shouldn't feel like you have to every single 
60 seconds, you gotta do triple scan at all of his bases and be like, what are you doing? I'm gonna scan you over and over and over and over and just not use mules ever because that's gonna fuck you up pretty bad. But if you just mm -hmm. have like a medevac, like a medevac harassing him, at the very least, you could be like, okay, well, this shows yeah. me what units he's building. This shows me like what his composition is. This shows me how many bases he's on. This shows me, uh, you know, what his future tech is looking like. It shows you like a lot about what he's investing into already. So, yeah. and then if you do damage, that also gives you a very good indicator of how you're doing in the game, whether or not the game is even, you're behind or you're ahead. Because obviously if your drop just gets shut down and you're investing into a drop, you see what he's, at least you see what he's going for. Oh, a bunch of blank stalkers or a bunch of Phoenix. Like I now I know at least know what he's yeah. doing, but if your drop gets shut down and you do, you do no damage, but at least you know what he's going for. I would say you're minorly behind, but it's not like, oh, you're, you're just at a major behind spot because at least you know yeah. you have a game plan essentially you're like okay well i yeah, know exactly. blind side yeah. exactly but if, like the the only time you should really feel like you're massively behind is if you don't ever leave your base and you uh or like maybe you left your base only once ever early game and you got shut down and you don't even know what he's really going for now and you're blind and you're playing defensive and you're being turtled and you're just you don't know what's happening and you're just like uh i guess i'll make this that is when you're truly behind because you just you, you're playing yeah. with no with no information in a negative position, and for all you know, he could be on five fucking nexus when you're on two command center. Uh, mm -hmm. But as long as you're always trying to get out there, at least like once every like minute to every minute and a half. So maybe like if your drop dies within a minute, send another one out, and just try to do at least a little more aggression. And it, 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 the thing that's crazy is, if you get attacked by your opponent and you're defensively set up behind your wall, eight marines a lot of times are not going to make or break the difference if you already have like 30 and you could have had 38, but you're behind a mm -hmm. depot wall. Like that depot wall is going to make a bigger difference than those eight Marines would. However, yeah. if those eight Marines are in a medevac and they drop into a mineral line while you're getting attacked and your opponent doesn't realize this and you just wiped out 22 probes while you traded an armies at your base and now let's say the fight resets a bit and you guys both lose your armies but you're both going back into that phase of rebuilding. Meanwhile, you just killed 22 probes, or like maybe you killed one midline, you loaded up, you killed another midline, now you've killed like 40 probes. That's fucking game ending mm -hmm. right there. You can literally win the game because of that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. that is huge. That, that, that's something you need to do as Saren. You need to always be trying yeah. to harass if you're not going for a timing, or when it's time to do a timing, you're focusing on timing. Yeah, and I think I need more games to, to get it more in my fingers. Yeah, it, Sometimes it's a bit slow, or I forget a building, or it's just getting used to as well. Yeah, the, like I said, the hardest part is macroing while you do a timing. That is definitely... Yeah. The, that takes practice. And you should. it's always when you have a moment where... Like, you should not always be feeling like you have to go A-move, 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 A-move every single two seconds, or every, like, half a second. If your units are already doing what they're going to do. And if you're like, okay, well, I'm looking at my units. You don't necessarily have to look away from your units. But while you're looking at your units and you know nothing is happening to them, that's bad. And you've said, step back, A, A, move this or whatever. Or you're clearly moving to a new location and nothing's killing you in the process. That is a perfect time to go for macro, tab, macro, tab, macro. Yeah. Back to my RB again, three seconds later or something like that. Yeah. And you have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And th th that's uh, what you practice as well, like to the bronze to GM. So that's... Um... And it's it, with bio, you have to like click twice as much because the building times are <laughs> fast. But uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, also, I can I can focus on that, so that helps a lot. Yeah. Also, just keep in mind too. This is a huge tip as well. When uh, when you have all like when you're in the build up phase of Terran, try to maintain a supply uh cushion of like maybe fifteen ish supply or like anywhere between like fifteen and twenty, and then you'll be great. You'll be like, cool. I uh, I can. You know, I'm, I'm building my starport right now. I'm building SCVs. I'm building like a unit, like a cyclone right now. You'll be totally fine if you maintain a supply cushion of like 15 to 20. But as soon as mm -hmm. you have all your add-ons done, like for you, like as soon as like this setup is like, like the five building production thing happens and it's like three reactors, two tech labs, three racks, one starport, one factory. All like, well, that is active and you're just constantly pumping out of that. It happens so fucking fast. Your supply cushion should now, it, you should just have a trigger in your mind that goes, okay, as soon as I'm there, try to have a supply cushion of like 30 to 40, like double it. Because you are going to have supply coming out so ridiculously fast if you can maintain production. So if you were yeah. building like one depot at a time before, double it. Like now you're going two at a time. Uh, yeah. 
So you can just try to maintain that because if you don't stay on top of that, the worst thing you can do to yourself is, you know, do one production cycle and then you're used to the one that was happening before add-ons. And now you're suddenly super supply blocked and you're like, well, now do I want to start dropping a bunch of drop supplies? Which if you do that, it's going to really hiccup your overall build too because now you might not be able to afford things like upgrades and yeah. unit production. So you really need to yeah, stay on top of your third. depots. Yeah, yeah you, you need to stay on top yeah. of the depots because just know that drop supply is better than just sitting there supply blocked for 20 seconds. But drop supply is not as good as the developing the developing power of mules in your build. So you really need yeah. to stay on top of that. That's like that is fucking huge, and that's what's gonna always make you look back at your base for a moment. So if you know you have a second to spare, like really quickly double tap your command center or hockey or whatever you want camera hockey, whatever you use, get the fuck back to your base, throw down your depots to be okay with it, and then go back to your army. But try not to ever max because or supply block because that is fucking so damaging to you if you do yeah yeah and I, and I have that a lot yeah it's just it's just hard because i i can i can feel for you i play terran as well and this race is very demanding in the harass stages if you do it well you feel like you're busy constantly and you're like good god like i'm trying to add on swap right now and not fuck up my units and if i look away for a mm -hmm. second suddenly everything's dead because marines least, are like yeah. <laughs> marines are the biggest pusses of the game <laughs> like if they're not if they're micro they're gods if they're not micro they're so bad so I totally yeah. get it. It's it's it does take a lot of practice. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, but it's really fun. It's it's really fun to play. So, I thanks thanks for uh, the Bronze Two GM uh, series, by the way, because I think without that I couldn't like get to this stage because you're like confused so much. You have no idea what you're doing. No, what to focus on. Yeah, and uh, just so that's uh, awesome. Something uh, for you, uh, any term, and also any other term player that's listening or watching this on YouTube at some point. Uh, just so you guys know, in March of this year, 2021, probably like mid-March, I am going to make another Beta Gym series. And this time around, I'm actually going to do a full bio series. I'm not going to do a mech oh, bio awesome. series. So, because bio is actually the way you want to go from diamond to masters, which is definitely harder than bronze to plat. And bronze to plat yeah. is, uh, even though I think bio is awful to do there, I really do. I think that the thing that's even more awful than that is how many people go, how the fuck do I play bio now in diamond when I could have actually learned how yeah. to, it could have been more gradual to learn how to play it in bronze. So yeah, that was really harsh switching over. Yeah. So I think that, that that's <laughs> I, what I, dro I dropped so much. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to make one that's just more gradual for bio. Oh, cool. I'm going to follow that one as well. Awesome. No, no worries. Uh, and they're, they're just the, also for anyone who's curious about it, the justification of why I, I feel like that makes sense is because I think going mech, mech to uh, going from diamond to masters, or GM rather with mech is harder than going from bronze to plat with bio because because bron uh, diamond to diamond plus mech if it's not zerg versus terran if it's so if it's terran versus terran or terran versus protoss it's fucking ridiculously hard like you have to know everything about that matchup in, in yeah. and out to make mech work because you're always out of position things are dying you're yeah. like oh i made too many tanks and i got fucking voids in my base i'm dead again like there's so many things that yeah, you have you can't to compensate. It's, yeah. yeah, you have to have the MMR capability of like a 5500 Terran to be able to go from Diamond to GM with Mech. Like you need to know so much yeah. shit with Mech to make it work. Otherwise, you lose so much. It was, and it works really well when, uh, as long as you can a move. But once like people get in, like like better cruiser or some other stupid stuff that could just fly over a cliff, you yeah, can't exactly. follow them with all your tours. You're e dead. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why I kind of. That's why I swapped as well. That's why I want to make. I want to make them because bio is much more realistic. It's much bio is way more forgiving as a composition. Like you can make a mistake and suddenly you recover, and you're like, oh, yeah. I'm over here now because it's a more it's a much more mobile army. But mech is not mobile at all. Like you're, if your tanks are sieged in the wrong spot. You're like, oh, well, I guess I just lost the game. Like, he's dropping my main base right now, and I'm at my fucking third base. I'm dead. Like, you just fucking yeah. die with mech. So, yeah, I, uh, I'm i going to make another series uh, next time with just biofocus so it has a gradual transition. So people like you, where you're like, Diamond was super hard. <laughs> like, I am trying to learn yeah. bio now, and it's just awkward. I definitely want to make it more gradual. It's going to make bronze to plat a little harder for people now, for Terran players, because there's going to be more shit to do. But I'll try and make it as easy as possible regardless. But uh, yeah, it'll it'll definitely flow better once you're diamond, and it won't feel like such a anchor, or like a like a, a ball yeah. on your fucking ankle or something, like a, a weight <laughs> essentially. Yeah, I can relate. Yeah. Yeah, man. But but, it, but it's worth it, guys. Bio is much more fun to play than mech. 
it's it's definitely a lot more uh, mobile and active for sure. All right, man. Well, any final questions about anything? Uh, no, we're, we're, we're way past our time. Thanks for all the all the tips and uh, and walking me through it. And there's so much more to uh, to improve and watch than I thought that would be. Um, I thought it would like the key to make like different units <laughs> at different stages, but uh, I think doing more harassment is really cool to try. Yeah, because it, it would make a lot of sense here. Because your build is definitely and repairing the build. <laughs> yeah, repairing the bunker. Yeah. yeah, this build is really it comes down to execution. Like again, I would have talked about your build for like 20 minutes if it looked like shit, but your build, other than the fact that you just didn't build units sometimes, which is that is the mm -hmm. that is the hard part of Terran. That's what you need to practice. Uh, your build order was great. Like it was, it fucking flowed. Like, everything flowed about it really well. You didn't hiccup anything anywhere really poorly. It flowed great. It definitely falls in the aggressive category, which is what Terran is anyways. So ma just being able to get better at that and understanding things like, for instance, like the Reaper harass is so important and like setting up the next few minutes of the game, things like that, mm -hmm. and how you like how we talked about how to like set up an attack with your bio with tanks over cliffs and shit and dropping and landing doing that yeah. that's something you should definitely work on and if you work on that more and more and more you will have such better results and it will it, your skill will grow as a player overall uh because yeah, your, your build is fine i can't really tell you about what your build should be because you're already doing a standard build great you just need to macro it better while you're micro yeah yeah and i'll swap the viking out for something else yeah i, I would say this liberator or raven or or that or either liberator or raven or you just make starport making add-ons until you're like this and then you make medivacs uh yeah. but yeah, never make a viking i would say for now until you get like really good and you have you develop your own flare as your own terran player for now fuck the viking just just make your cyclone and call it a day and a raven's really nice too because if if you make a raven it completely rules out tech builds in terms of like cloak builds and it also rules out mm -hmm tech power builds that do things like if, if you have a guy who's like, I'm going to go for a really fast battle cruiser, or I'm going to do like a Colossus timing, or I'm going to do uh, a siege tank timing. Like you can rule out these aggressive, like really heavy unit uh, to, uh, fo focused timings because you can disable mm -hmm. the units with the Raven. Yeah. So yeah, that's a cool thing to try as well. Yeah. Anyways, man, best of luck. Hey, thanks a lot. Uh, vibe. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you for doing a lesson, dude. And, uh, I'll, I'll have this posted to you by probably tomorrow on Discord, maybe the day after. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, very nice. Uh, I can watch it again. Yeah, cool. All right, man. Hey, thanks, and uh, good luck with the stream. Yeah, go get some sleep before your kids wake up. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah, I will. I will. Bye-bye. <laughs> hey, All right, see you, dude. All right, guys. Thank you for watching another coaching lesson. Uh, much appreciated. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This has been a Terran Diamond level lesson right here, uh, specifically for bio. So... Uh, hopefully, you know, this helps you guys and hopefully if you guys, you know, want even more information about Terra Bio, something to look forward to with the BDGM series. If, uh, if you're watching this before March of 2021, well, something to look forward to, or if you're watching this after March of 2021, well, you can go probably check out my YouTube channel and it's probably already there. So, uh, or further in there. So anyways, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next thing that goes on. And, uh, until then, good luck. Take it easy. Adios.